Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's Waiver Day, Tuesday, September 15th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. We're the Fantasy Footballers back and getting you ready for week two. Watched a little bit of football over the last four days. That, it was wild last night as I'm in the, the third quarter of game one. And then that, oh, wow. There is another game on after this. That's spectacular. And a nice uh, IV bag set up. It was just yeah. dripping football. Just Oh, I yeah. thought you meant you you literally had an IV bag well, to get you through. Two arms. So one was football oh. and the other was just a healthy saline like a banana bag. You know you couldn't handle the needle. Oh, I could never. I could never. Get away from me, doctor. <laughs> Tell my family I love them. Jason has a few uh, quirks like that. Like you don't you said you could never get LASIK because your eyes, you don't like people touching your eyes. Yeah, that's hard. How do you feel about lasers, though, touching your eyes? I think lasers are cool <laughs> when they're not shot into my skull. What would you do if there was, like, a spider carrying around uh, needles? Oh, man. Oh, I'd, yeah, because you don't like spiders. Mike's I, just bringing your horrors to my, the forefront. My <laughs> two horrors. No, you're right. My two horrors are basically needles and spiders. So if those things were together. So if like one had a, like a hypodermic needle just taped to its back, <laughs> it's just running I, around. I don't think that would scare Mike me Mike is more. really working on this like but nightmare maybe, for you. Maybe I would just maybe but, I would just have a heart attack. But you've always wanted, <laughs> you've, you've been a proponent of general anesthesia for all sorts of things. I mean, you, any medical procedure of any kind, like a normal vaccine you're probably under general 100 percent. if it's allowed if there is a medical group that will allow it whatever it is you want to give me an iv please give me just knock me out first general. With, yes sir we're just putting a band-aid on oh. gas mask immediately he's got nitrous this is in the car I, I brought my own i don't know how we got here all right we have a jam-packed waiver show today where we will attempt to appropriately react to week one, not underreact, not overreact, just plain old react. The baby bear. And um, we saw, I mean, what was your reaction to the games last night? We we had a couple of well, interesting uh, matchups. We had Steven Goskowski oh, oh, man. as the saddest man in, oh. in town, although could have been sadder. Yeah, no, he, he turned it around. Last night was wild because there were – Really big fantasy football things that happened, like really, really big. And starting with the Pittsburgh Steelers game, James Conner uh, comes in. <laughs> James Conner was uh, he started off. I've as, got all sorts of drops for him. I, yeah, we could I, go. I, I figured you do. Go there. James Conner started go. the game as the bell cow, a very inefficient bell cow uh, with his six carries, only nine yards on the ground. But he tweaked his ankle uh, seemingly. Slash ego. Well, it's seemingly immediately, and he, he went off to the side, and nothing was really being reported on it, which was interesting because, you know, you always get the update right away, and I believe it's actual NFL protocol. They have to report something. But it was – it really felt like Mike Tom was like, seriously, man? Seriously, I I've, I spent this whole offseason defending you, saying that you're going to be the leader of this running back team, and this is what happens. And I don't doubt at all that, that James Conner actually hurt his – he tweaked his ankle to the point where he needed to go off to the side for a little bit. But Benny Snell came in. Benny Snell looked like a transformed running back compared to last year. He looked very good, and that's just – that's a confirmation of everything we'd heard out of camp, that all the beat reporters saying – Benny Snell looks really good as the backup. So how are you guys reacting to the, the Benny Snell, James Conner situation? And, Andy, you're the one. You drafted James Conner. For were the letting, first time in my whole <laughs> life. I were, mean, I 
You've been anti Connor for years because of this. Now, let me say this. If someone out there is going, what? Andy drafted James Connor. I drafted Benny Snell too. Yeah. So I'm not a complete psychopath, but, uh, I want clarity. Like, if I have a request for this week, I just want some sort of clarity because what I believe will happen, what I tweeted last night, and I don't know anything about an injury report for James Conner. So when you listen to this, I could already be wrong because something could have come out. What I think is going to happen is that this game was well enough in control. Tomlin was frustrated enough, and Benny Snell was effective enough. That, that Connor didn't need to re-enter this game. I don't know if the injury is much of anything. The only report I have from Schefter is that it's not much of anything. Yeah, the quote was, optimistic for a timely return. Yeah. Whatever that means. Obviously, Snell's going to be in the waiver part of this show. He yes. needs to be added. But what I'm worried will happen is that he'll just start next week. Connor will just start next week. Snell might take a little bit more work from him. Connor could get hurt again because he, he pencils it in for – any time between quarter one and quarter four yes. of, of a National Football League game. That's my worry, Jason. Yeah, no, I, I echo those things. I think every fantasy owner will have a hard time deciding what to do. I assume Connor will be healthy for next week, and you go, okay, do I do I play him? And I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, the way that they just sat him and moved on and said, okay, Snell's our guy. Would you guys be shocked if James Connor is active and healthy next week and Benny Snell is the starter? I, I would be shocked if he was – yeah, I would be shocked. You would be? I think I would be surprised. I would not be – but not a full shock. What what stinks for the Benny Snell experience, Jalen Samuels, the other running back on this team, he was brought in when it was like – Every third down. When it was a passing situation, yeah. Benny Snell had one target, zero receptions. So if – let's say they they move forward with Benny Snell, the best part of the Pittsburgh Steelers running back was he – Got a whole bunch of targets on top of all the running or the the carries on the ground, so that remains to be seen. That's still another part of the mystery. That's why Connor was more valuable as he yes. was a three down back. And a week ago, Tomlin said bell cow James Connor, but yep, he didn't look good in the limited work he got. He reminded me of the David Johnson we saw last year, right? Yep. Uncertain, hesitant, didn't look fast. Now to be scared. To be fair to the to James Connor, the the entire Steelers offense looked really rusty to start that yeah. game True. With, True. We, with Big Ben. The other story uh, on the Steelers side is you are not going to want to play your running backs against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Holy crap, Saquon Barkley! What did he end with? We have 15 carries for six yards. My man Barkley. <laughs> Was chilling in negative yardage for like seventy five. He had no chance for those. Yes, I mean he had no chance. They were in the backfield he every time he swarmed. took a handoff, and it wasn't just one guy taking down Barkley. It was the handoff goes off, and there are four Pittsburgh Steelers defenders inside or like now on the other side of the field. Is it Melvin Gordon that yes. gets to experience this next week? Oh, that, good luck, Melvin. Melvin Gordon will be on your bench. <laughs> Man, Steelers uh, defense next week with a pass happy Drew Lock. Yeah, might be interesting. We did get to see a competitive close game there in well, Tennessee. Before we move to Tennessee, what did you guys think of Daniel Jones? I'm, I'm besides the <laughs> I, I like, had a take. Daniel Jones had two boneheaded <laughs> mistakes that only a rookie quarterback should be making. But with that, you saw some really good throws. I mean, he ended up with 279 passing yards, two passing touchdowns against this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Daniel Jones is going to be the Jameis Winston of this season. He has That's, made That sounds good for fantasy. Has, exactly. I I I walked away from this game going garbage time Daniel Jones and company is going to produce a ton of fantasy points this year. This defense isn't going to stop people uh not enough to to put them in this position where, you know, Daniel Jones isn't winging it. Yeah, that's enough. I mean, he'll be he'll be chucking it. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that that is good news for Darius Slayton. Yeah, if if you uh, if that was a very fun conversation this entire offseason. Which Giants wide receiver are you in on? Through week one, if you win in on Darius Slayton, you look like the big winner right now. I, I don't remember who tweeted it, so I can't give them credit. But somebody mentioned like Darius Slayton has scored two touchdowns in four of his first like sixteen NFL games. And I think he has two across all the rest. 
So he's had these monster games, um, but he was impressive. Juju Smith-Schuster, two touchdowns on uh, six for six in terms of targets, receptions, and Deontay Johnson. Basically, Juju and Deontay Johnson received the majority of all the targets. We did not see Eric Ebron uh, break out in this offense, only one catch. James Washington, just two catches. Chase Claypool, two big catches. Oh, he looked great. Uh, But the targets all went Juju and Deontay Johnson's way, so those seem like the two that you can – look to yep, for the absolutely. future with absolutely. Juju's big game the fact that he had the two touchdowns more yardage and it was kind of a mild game for Deontay Johnson I would go try to make a trade offer for Deontay Johnson watching the game I thought he 10 targets he yes 10 he targets looked he looked great yeah. and and they started getting a rhythm later in the game I think that people might be disappointed with this and you could hopefully scoop him up for cheap yeah or he's sitting on you know a waiver wire a- after waiver day goes because somebody's making a pivot to somebody oh. like Corey Davis. Um, Tennessee <laughs> ended up with uh, Corey Davis, eight targets, seven receptions, 101 yards. Um, I have a new classification for week one. It's DCY. Okay. Don't care yet. Oh, okay. It's my don't care yet policy. And with Corey Davis, it's a DCY. I don't think 43 passing attempts was not part of the recipe No. For Tennessee. No, it was not. Uh, But it was nice to see Corey Davis do something. And I believe Devontae Parker has has, uh, condemned the fantasy football community into believing anybody that has stunk having a good game is the next Devontae Parker. Is Corey Davis the next Devontae Parker, Mike? I will. I mean, he'll be in the waivers. I would be adding Corey Davis and, and putting him on my bench just in case. I mean, if we were sitting here last year. I think Parker had a bad week one uh, off the top of my head, but then Parker started to put together some games, and it was, well, you know, is Devontae Parker he's on a trash offense. And if you didn't add Devontae Parker, then you really missed out. So he will be worth sticking on your bench, but I'm not, like, going to break the, the fab bank or anything like that. All right, Jerry Judy, eight targets, four catches, 56 yards. Noah Fant, six oh, targets, man. five receptions, 81 yards. Yeah, and so. a touchdown. He looked great explosive they had some designed plays for him I don't know if this is just because Cortland Sutton is that's what I wanted to ask is gone but I I, you know you can also argue that Cortland Sutton helps open things up for him helps the offense stay on the field I really like Noah Fant going forward if he's on waivers which I, I don't know how many leagues he's actually available in he's probably you know, at, at the tight end position, my number one. Yeah, my number one guy. Yeah, as the if you lost Jarwin, I I tend to agree that that Fant is at the top of the list. Uh, Philip Lindsay was sharing the backfield with Melvin Gordon. He did go down with a toe injury. It's being classified as a mild turf toe, so we will have to wait and see what's going on with him. Well, the good news is it's Steelers. You don't next want a week. spicy turf toe. So, no, yes, no. Keep it mild. No, not right? caliente. New York City. All right. Uh, we have a report. Uh, not talked about a lot because so much is happening, but this is a big, big, big deal. Michael Thomas, high ankle injury. Um, are we in the news? Oh, are we Are we not in the news? I don't know. I don't think I've heard I the news drop. I didn't hear a news drop. I guess I, I saw I the refuse j- to talk about the news. News and notes from around the league. You refuse to news? That is correct. I was very happy with I the apologize. Un- I saw the James Conner sprained ankle, and um, I thought we were already there. But that that's really on me. Very unprofessional. <sighs> Can we restart the show? No? Let's go again. <laughs> Let's re-roll. <laughs> I want to talk about Corey Davis again. Michael Thomas suffered a high ankle sprain. So that, that is the report from Saints uh, camp. Now, a lot... <laughs> When, when my son woke up the next day and saw the report, he's like, oh, that explains the bad game. Mm-mm. But the bad game actually happened, and then the injury happened. Correct. Um, he has a Monday night football game in week two. We'll be monitoring the practice oh, reports. Oh, no. We'll have the Injury Blitz podcast on jointhefoot.com on Friday afternoon with the latest on Michael Thomas. But you you just need to have a plan. You do need to have a plan. The the indications are he's going to try and play through it. What does that mean? It, uh, we've in fantasy football, high ankle sprain is a very dreaded term because it is often an injury that guys do 
playthrough on the field, but they are severely hampered and their production goes down. Yeah, you saw that last year with Saquon, Alvin Kamara, Christian Kirk. When they came back, they weren't quite the same, and those were obviously high level, not just average players right. uh, in Saquon and, and Kamara. So you do have to watch this. I, I, I believe Michael Thomas will play. I think you could have a backup option with the other wide receiver options there if, if you can g grab Emmanuel Sanders or Traquan Smith to just bide your time to make sure he's going to play. I would still put him in my lineup. I, you know, if I'm the Michael Thomas owner, uh, if if he's who I'm rostering, I definitely would choose to play him even on Monday Night Football with the injury. Latest on the 49ers injuries: George Kittle, a knee sprain. Debo, we knew he was on IR, but we didn't know why, and here we are again with the Jones fracture, Jason. Yeah, it's it's you know the propensity for this to pop up again, um, and once you fix it the second time. Uh, then it's pretty much you've got a full career ahead of you. We don't know for sure that this is going to require another surgery, but it's it's disconcerting. It's it's not something that is good news. Um, and, and speaking on the George Kittle front, this is the exact same thing that happened to him last year that did cause him to miss some games. So I, I think if you, if you have George Kittle on the roster, you have to prepare to play without him this week. All right, and then um, David Njoku's on injured reserve. Adam Gaze isn't sure when Lev Bell uh, is going to be back. He said it could be a couple of weeks, which means Frank Gore is going to start at running back on a team it's un that is difficult to Believable. see. Unbelievable. Here we are, Frank Gore. Who would have thought? He is infinite. Okay, okay. <laughs> he is all. Adam Gaze really likes Frank Gore. He does. And then Adam Gaze is really upset at himself for putting Bell back in after he was already hurt. Oh, man. I and see I where you're going. I don't want to be that. I see where you're going. Story we guy. are We are definitely not saying that happened. I'm not saying it didn't happen. Let's say option <laughs> one, Mike, is that it didn't happen. And then option two... Number two. Is that it did. Uh, well, either way, Frank Gore is, should probably be picked up. We didn't yeah, get played against the 49ers this coming oh, week. Bruh, bruh. That's my reaction to playing the 49ers <laughs> as Frank Gore. But Fair. if he misses multiple weeks and you need a running back. Yes. Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Cooper Cup, all signed extensions. We hadn't talked about it yesterday because so much was going on. It happened over the weekend. So running backs got paid this offseason. Cook, Kamara, Mixon. Um, we saw Derrick Henry get paid. So there, there's a lot. So we're going to talk about waivers. And just, uh, I don't know if you guys had heard, but Cooper Cup is going to be the punt returner. Yeah. For the Rams. So we don't, we've uh, very, very little, basically never talk about return yards. But I know that there are people out there that play in return yardage leagues. This gives Cooper Cup a bit of a bump. Deontay Johnson also attempted to be that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was that was, that was sketchy for <laughs> a while, man. He's a great punt returner, but it got in his head. Yeah, it was a bad game. I almost feel like any time you muff a punt, you should skip the next punt. Like, just mentally. Like, it's a, too much of a risk for the team. Right. The next punt is always, like, the safest catch falling down that you could have. Um, all right, we're going to get into our waiver segment of the show. This episode of the Fantasy Footballers brought to you by Head & Shoulders – Available at Walmart this year. You heard it. Last Thursday, we're doing a brand new segment. Players we're going to pick up that we believe are taking it up to 100. Oh, that's right. Got to take it all the way. And um, so we had that segment last week. And what we're looking at in that segment is basically players that are outside where the consensus um, would would have starting options. So last week, it was a little different. We didn't have a previous week where somebody had a bad week. But we, we went with Boston Scott. Boston Scott was injured. That's a big miss. Mm -hmm. Took it to about four. He tried. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Jason, you said oh. take it to 100. I mean, I couldn't have seen how it came, but I saw it coming, and I'm happy that he took it to 100. I'm pretty sure anybody who has Jonathan Taylor is ecstatic yeah. about the prospects. Andy, I go to you. I'm ecstatic about the prospects, I Jason. I knew it. Uh, Antonio Gibson, Mike, you uh, he didn't get he didn't quite get to 100 for week one. Uh, he didn't quite get there, but I still believe that Antonio Gibson will get to 100 eventually. Yeah, yeah, he's a hold. He's a hold. Uh, you can take your hair up to 100 with Head and Shoulders available at Walmart. 
pick yours up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to 100 picks this week. And Foot Clan, do not forget about the NFL Game Pass. It's football time. And you got to be watching the football. It's and the football NFL Game time. Pass is how you do it. Catch every snap from every game with full game replays. You can see all the plays in just about 45 minutes with condensed games. We use the Game Pass all the time. This is how we go back and check out the film. They they, they get right to the point, right to the plays. Don't waste uh, any time with, you know, it's, there's there's no guff. You know, we don't, we don't want the guff on this show. NFL Game Pass says, oh, no more guff for the games. It's the only place you can replay every game all season long. And now you can check out 40 NFL Game Pass film session episodes. It's a player's perspective. They break things down. Incredibly interesting. Learn from guys like Deshaun Watson, Devontae Adams, many more. And you can go to NFL.com slash footballers to start your free trial today. NFL Game Pass, where football never stops. Put me in, coach. All right. Big waiver week. Trying to make the right calls. Some of these pickups are going to be players that uh, you can start right away. Others may be hold options because mm -hmm. it's week one. We didn't have a preseason. We didn't have the opportunity to get a read on a number of players. This is the first time, for instance, you got to see Benny Snell on the field. You right. didn't get to watch a preseason game, see if the camp reports were right. So uh, a lot of this is, is based on who you would be dropping as well. So we kind of gathered the top drop candidates from, from Twitter, from Oof. IG. People are uh, upset. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you – well, start at the wide receiver position. I want to read you five names. People want to know if they should drop them. You can just let me know yes or no. Odell Beckham Jr. after the bad week one. No. I, I get it. You're mad. I get it. No. You do, he has too much draft capital name value. You don't drop – You tra if, you, if you want out, you got to trade, but you can't drop Odell Beckham. Uh, Brian Edwards, rookie wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders. Ruggs had the much better game and is back. Uh, yeah, he's dropped for me. He is a still hold for me. He was he was on the field more than any other wide receiver, so it, it, I think the targets will come. Tough matchups for them coming up. I'm going to drop him. Brandon Cooks? He's a hold. Yep, agreed. Christian Kirk? You can drop him. Drop. Nikhil Harry? You can probably drop him. Yeah, I'm okay holding him, but we're about to talk about so many waiver wire options that uh, might be better and I would probably drop Harry for several of them sure okay um big pickups at the wide receiver position you guys can weigh in on who you think your number one would be players that got a lot of attention in week one Darius Slayton Paris Campbell Slayton was six for one or two and two Paris Campbell in week one nine targets six for 71 certainly you know I believe he played all, if not almost all of his yes. snaps in the slot, which is a very nice, close to the line of scrimmage place to be for Mr. Phillip Rivers. That is correct. Paris Campbell, interesting. Mike Williams, surprisingly, nine targets, was in on 78% of snaps. Every time Mike Williams goes down, uh, because he doesn't catch the ball unless he is flying in the air and then landing on his shoulder, I'm always scared, but he came out unscathed, it seems. Yeah, it's he, ragdoll physics are <laughs> cranked up to 100 every time Mike Williams goes down. He's so big. Well, he's not allowed to get a target unless he's 15 yards away. Like, that's minimum. That's where they're f now allowed to throw him the ball. So the, the collisions are fierce. So out of those three names, out of those who, guys, who are you most interested in, in putting on your roster? Paris Campbell has Minnesota next week. Slayton has Chicago. Mike Williams has Kansas City. For those guys, it would be Paris Campbell to me because I'm the most secure in his role. And Minnesota, the Jets, the next two matchups for Paris Campbell, he, he's going to be a, an absolute target monster for Phillip Rivers. He's, he, his athletic profile is fantastic. He will break some slants off uh, to the house. And then I would the, – the reason he's my number one over Darius Slayton is simply just it's week one. Golden Tate was not active. And we've seen the the carousel of the New York Giants wide receivers do this before. So I like Slayton. I want to put him on my bench if possible. Uh, Paris Campbell also, you know, far more available in fantasy football leagues. And I just I'm I'm very confident that Paris Campbell is that like six plus target a week type of guy where Slayton 
will Slayton will disappear at times. Yeah, I agree. Those are the two uh, guys out there that that I would want the most. Darius Slayton would be who I would target number one for me. I just don't think he's going to now, be in the average person's. Just league. because you're a Paris Campbell. No, hater. no. Actually, I am very much very in on Paris Campbell oh. going forward. All I, right. I have. All right. I have never been a Paris Campbell truther, but the way he was used, he stayed in a lot of his hotels. Oh yeah, uh, the Hilton is. <laughs> just fantastic we're back to this i don't know i <laughs> tried but, to kind of find a creative avenue in there uh, mike it was a little different but darius slayton was someone on the trying, nose trying to target in the preseason because he profiles in a lot of ways as a breakout candidate one of those nebulous uh cores he's young he's done it before um and i love the targets and yeah. i love the targets i love the snap percentage um and i'm not afraid of the chicago matchup so he would be my number one claim, I don't I'm think not he's going to be available in most leagues. Then it would go to Paris Campbell. However, th this is week one. I, I view two running backs as much greater sign. So I'm not going to spend up. I'm not going to burn my waiver priority because I do think that there are a tremendous amount of wide receivers that are also good pickups. I that will cost you nothing. Yeah, and in a PPR league, I'm I'm excited about Russell Gage's opportunity. He ended the season on a run, and then he had 12 targets in Week One. He he was nine for 114. Um, people were disappointed in Hayden Hurst, and when we talk about tight ends, we can talk about whether you should be holding Hurst. I believe you should. He ran the most routes of any tight end. He did in football on Sunday. So yeah, it. I like Russell Gage. I like. His Some games are going to be Hurst games. But it's it's going to be that, that seesaw back and forth between him and Hurst. But in PPR, I think he's going to be good for five catches a week, regardless of whether he, he balloons up to 9-10. Um, Jalen Rager, you yeah. bring his name up. He only had one catch for uh, – He had four targets, and it, it, he was coming off an injury. And so – And he was missed on a another deep ball. I mean, he was wide open. And Carson Wentz overthrew him. Carson Wentz hits him in stride on that one, and all of a sudden he was two for 110 and a touchdown, and he's one of this the is, number one guys that we're talking this about. This is why I don't add Corey Davis. And if you want to be somebody that just adds him and sees what happens, that's fine. I've been around the block with Corey Davis. I don't care yet because he's had great games before. And he looked good. But he did. Do we think that Ryan Tannehill is – are you putting him above A.J. Brown rest of the season? No. Are you putting him above Johnny Smith in target share rest of the season? Pro Probably. Maybe target share, but maybe not fantasy value. Mm -hmm. And then they're a running team. And there's so many other names like Rager that if I don't need to start somebody this week, I want to see what happens with them on my team. So I don't have to spend big fab later on when Rager breaks out or when Robbie Anderson continues a breakout. Robbie Anderson yeah. had an impressive debut. He did. Um, J.J. Zacharyson pointed out, Teddy Bridgewater in this game, and mind you, their defense is awful, so he may be doing this a lot. Teddy Bridgewater threw the ball deep more than any quarterback in week one, percentage-wise, of his attempts. It's not necessarily you know well-known because DJ Moore didn't come down with some of these uh, air yard passes, but Robbie Anderson was on the field more than Curtis Samuel was, made the big play, is out of the shadow of number two, six for 115 and one on eight targets. There's no reason Robbie Anderson shouldn't be on your fantasy roster. I agree. He, sh he should be on your bench. And, and just to combo that with – because people are disappointed with DJ Moore. Yeah, just just hold on. I agree completely with that, Andy, that the Panthers' defense is going to be bad. And we're, we're only one weekend, but we saw some proof of life from Teddy Bridgewater of him willing to go down the field a little bit more than we are used to. DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson are uh, – very interesting to me to moving forward. Yeah, there's so many guys here. You could go with the other tandem, Alan Lazard, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, right? And and you know, to see if Aaron Rodgers still has the magic. That that's why I'm going to sort these guys, uh, you know, in the order I like them. But I'm not going to really pay up. Uh, agreed. Outside of for Slayton, but even then, so I talk about that strategy. You'll just put smaller fab uh, bids on a number of guys and just end up with one in that category of players you like? Yeah, I mean, genuinely for me, and I probably won't get Slayton if he's out there because I would, I would, you know, go 5% or so. But at the wide receiver position, I'm probably putting in $0 bids 
on so many of these guys, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna sort them in the order I like them, and then I will get a good option because we don't know if it's gonna be Alan Lazard or Robbie Anderson or Russell Gage. They're they're in the same tier of they have an avenue towards success, um, but there's no guarantee for any of them. So I will sort them in my preferred order. Save the money for running back. McCaffrey was behind all three of those wide receivers in target share in week one in Carolina. Carolina was one of the number one places we wanted to see some questions answered. There is not a 0% chance that Robbie Anderson has a better fantasy season than DJ Moore. Sure. And fair. DJ Moore was drafted early. Robbie Anderson's on waiver wires. It's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. um, Scotty Miller was interesting. Five for 73 PPR league uh, target. Is there anybody else that we're missing that you really want to – I mean, Sammy Watkins is full DCY yeah. for five weeks for me. <laughs> I would, I would actually – Don't care yet. He will be in my list. He won't be at the top, but he'll be in the list. If I had a button on this stream deck to punch you, <laughs> Sammy Watkins – Like or, one of those big old, like, comes off screen. Like the, the uh, boxing glove? Yeah. Yeah, Andy, Sammy Watkins or Corey Davis? Yeah. Oh, well yeah. – No, no, no. I mean, you're, those are both guys that you've seen big games before. They're – I don't want to choose one of those. You can't make me choose one. You have of them. to. You got to pick one. <laughs> Robbie Anderson. <laughs> All right, that's a very Jason Moore answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just insulted me with yourself. Yeah, take that, me. <laughs> Get bodied, <laughs> me. Running backs. Oh. Let's start with those drop candidates and yeah. whether or not uh, because you got to make room if you want to add somebody. So, Chris Thompson. Yeah. Mark Ingram. Oh no, 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 no. You don't drop Mark Ingram. No. Antonio Gibson, no, you hold no, Antonio hold. Gibson. Yeah. Matt Breida, Jordan Howard. See ya. D R O P. Yeah. Cam Akers. Nope. You no. Fourteen carries. No. Boston Scott. No, you can't drop him at all. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I, I there's a chance Miles Sanders doesn't play again, and he, See, the Boston Scott comes out and is the starter. Again oh, I would. Week. I would drop. Boston there's a Scott. chance that neither Miles Sanders or Boston Scott plays. Yeah, Boston Scott was not getting near the snap that's the kind of mirage of week one boston's got didn't get the snaps that we thought he was going to get before he was hurt so i i would personally drop him for some of these other options um carry on johnson you can drop him yep all right big pickups this week everyone wants to talk about i mean i think the number one overall has to be naeem hines it is for me it's tied for me okay it's between naeem hines and james robinson but i would i would probably really? lean. you got robinson over malcolm brown yeah yeah i mean okay. I, I i think that naeem hines and james robinson are a season long play i think both of them are going to be relevant and important for fantasy football for the rest of the season now maybe when Rykel armstead or um divino zigwo come back maybe that does eat into james robinson's role in which case maybe put naeem hines first you but, know what? I think you're I think you're hundred percent right. Yes. <laughs> I think James Robinson, because we're not familiar with him, because we did have off season hype on this show and others about Naeem Hines, I think Robinson's week one is probably being ignored. He's the only running back in week one with a hundred percent of his team's rushing attempts. He looked pretty good. He certainly did. looked at or above Leonard Fournette's level. Chris Thompson was irrelevant. He was. And I don't see Divino Zigbo. I mean, he's on IR for the season or just for those first? No, it's just the first three. I just don't think well, those guys are going to be worked in if James Robinson's effective. Well, so if I'm in a, a half or a full, James Robinson's probably okay. just as valuable as Hines. Well, uh, let me ask you this then, because that if you're buying into James Robinson, to me, uh, you are buying into Jacksonville uh, being more competitive in games because you saw one target for James Robinson. I, I, I'm in. If you want to drop Chris Thompson, I totally get it. He was not on the field at all. But this was a neutral to positive game script for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a good point. If We, we don't know what's going to happen once that script goes upside down. Will James Robinson be the one who gets the targets? Meanwhile, to me, Naheem Hines was clearly already a part of the offensive plan for the Indianapolis Colts he got on the field before Jonathan Taylor he was getting goal line carries the 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 question of does Philip Rivers throw to his just throw to his running backs because of the scheme he was in with the Chargers or is that who Philip Rivers is as a quarterback 
That's it's who a, Phillip Rivers is as a quarterback. It's an interesting question, Mike, and a good point. But the same exact argument you made for James Robinson can be – we can look at the Naeem Hines situation too where this game was more competitive than we thought it was. Naeem Hines is probably not on the field in, in, in non-neutral to, uh, you know, when they're down in a game. Um, when Ma- Ma- Marlon Mack went out, Hines had three carries. J- uh, Jonathan Taylor had ten. Um, yes. Yeah, Taylor is the one, the first and second down guy, absolutely for sure. But I, I think Hines will be – I mean, this is – I'm just comfortable with them as – light. Yeah. And now would you add Malcolm Brown over either of those players? I would personally not. Um, I think he would be third on my list. I'm not saying I ahead would of not Benny Snell. Add him. I don't want. So here's the thing. I don't want the it's Steelers tough. headache. Yeah. I just don't want it. I mean, I, I Benny Snell. I will make a uh, you know a roster claim for him because the you know the avenue for points it, it could happen. But he's not going to be my highest priority because I don't want the headache of. Oh, James Conner's active this week. Oh, he got injured again in mid-game. Snell scored. Should I start Snell this next week? I don't know if I should start him because James Conner's active. Oh, I didn't start him and he scored points. Now I'm going to start him. Oh, now he wasn't the starter. I just don't want to – I don't want that life. And I'm sorry, Andy, that I know you're going to have it. Not if I have anything to say about (laughs) it. I think you will have clarity, though, week two. Like, Benny Snell – is he is a must add in all league formats he should be on somebody's bench you're not playing him in week two unless you get a full Mike Tomlin go ahead later on in the week that says we've made the move Benny Snell will be the starting running back I don't think that's going to come how thin is the ice for James Conner from a production standpoint exactly of I uh, you're putting on you're putting him on your bench waiting because week two if Benny Snell is the starting running back for week two, I think you have your That's fair. answer. That's fair. The Steelers' defense is so good that 19, 20 attempts for the starting running back is going to become routine. Now, they did have uh, some major injuries uh, that we should at least uh, bring up. The The Pittsburgh Steelers on the offensive line, uh, the, the right tackle – the backup guard who was playing in for because De, DeCastro was hurt, so they they did take some some lumps there, and that has an effect on the running game. Joshua Kelly, Joshua Kelly had twelve carries for sixty yards. He got all the goal line carries in Los Angeles. He looked good. Joshua Kelly is a must add to me. Yeah, I I, I can agree with that. But uh, Malcolm Brown, real quick, where is he, Andy, in your? order of these guys well he's he's the player you can go start next week maybe I mean the matchups for the next two weeks the the Eagles and the Bills are very difficult which is probably my biggest concern concern is the fact that I don't know if I can start him and then I know that they're going I I still believe they will make a, a transition to Cam Akers at some point um you know, obviously Malcolm Brown looked to be the best running back week one, so mm-hmm. maybe he just keeps the job the whole season. I don't I, – I still don't project that. He just looked – the gap was large in week one between the two of them. Agreed. And McVay's been so pronounced in his committee backfield approach that I don't think he has an agenda. I don't think, I don't think McVay has an agenda to have one running back. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. Which is all the more reason to to doubt Malcolm Brown as being. Well, the you said guy. take over. You said Cam Akers would take over. Uh, take over the leading role in that timeshare, which right now is Malcolm though? Brown. No, I think Malcolm Brown will probably s- stick with the goal line. But remember, he had two touchdowns week one last year. Yeah, but Todd Gurley was still on the team. A much sure. different team for me. Malcolm Brown would be. He also had three catches s- and eighteen carries. I- Malcolm Brown would either be second. Like he's tied with James Robinson for me. So right, Hines now, is one for you. Yes. Robinson and Brown are tied, and then you're putting Benny Snell or Josh Kelly uh, at the top of that list. I would put Benny Snell ahead of Josh Just, just to wait and see. Now, would you – if Connor's healthy, let's say you – because this is an interesting way to look at it. Connor's healthy and the bell cow again two days into the week. Are you then – are you cutting Benny Snell and moving to a Joshua Kelly to see what you could get? Nah, or are you I'm staying gonna, with Snell? I'm going to hold on. If okay. James Connor's already – tweaking his ankle in week one we're gonna we're gonna see what we got here and and hopefully i mean for the foot clan listening to the show you you know we talk holistically about fantasy football and always being active never being complacent with your roster 
Malcolm Brown and James Robinson were two guys we focused on of, of right post draft, saying if you didn't like your your uh, the, the last man on your bench, you should be putting Malcolm Brown and James Robinson on and just seeing what happens. So hope hopefully this is a this is a moot point, and we're talking about the eight percent and ESPN leagues who are rostering Malcolm Brown. <laughs> that's right, the Foot Clan. That's the Foot Clan. What percentage of your Fab would you spend on Naeem Hines? Ooh, I would go 25 plus percent. I would go 35 percent on those two running backs that I like. See, the thing you're trying to look for here is a player that you're going to have value at with through the duration of the season. Right. Because if you, you know, and I agree with you guys, I think 30, 35 percent is probably um, where I'd be at as well. He's going, I mean, they had so many targets. Yeah. I, I believe in. I believe I think in Hines. S- like 17 targets to the running back position. Yeah, sounds about and right. Sounds about Phillip sounds Rivers. about Rivers. <laughs> sounds about Rivers. And they have Minnesota next week, then the Jets, then Chicago. Um, other names, I'm going to bring them up. Are you interested, Jarek McKinnon? Not really. Mildly. Frank Gore, San Francisco, Indianapolis, Denver. No, <sighs> I. What if you're in a 35 and over league? A- age wise, if you're in <laughs> on a, on a now is it, joke, wait the players or the the fantasy managers who's 35 <laughs> here it, it, in a not joking way. If you're in a 14 team league, a, a deeper league, one that's you know uh, more difficult, and you've got to scratch and claw your way to a third flex spot start, then the, yeah, fr- uh, Frank Gore will get work. Yes, he will. Um, Adrian Peterson will get work. Peyton Barber. Will get work. Those you, are players. Do you want Peyton Barber or Frank Gore? Do you want Peyton Barber and his 17 for 29 or Frank Gore? I would rather have Frank Gore. Okay. Uh, but I would probably take Adrian Peterson over either of them. I was about to ask you. You can All start right. Adrian Peterson yeah. this week. Can you not? I think so. Green Bay's a pretty good defense. Um, so it's, it's not I, – I don't love the matchup for any one of these guys. Malcolm but Brown I would, or AP this week? Mm, Malcolm, Malcolm Brown. Brown. Okay. That's where I that's where I sit too. He got some passing game work. I expect them to be on the goal line more often than Detroit is. Yes. Um, okay. Anybody else who wants to talk about a running back? Chase Edmonds. Uh, he's drafted a lot, but he's still available in a lot of leagues. Needs to be picked up. Looked great um, this last week, and and we've already seen Drake in a walking boot, and he had a touchdown. So we'll we'll see if the we've seen him in a walking boot this week. Well, no, we've already seen him. Chase looked great this week. Very fashionable. Chase Edmonds looked great this week was what I was saying. And Kenya Drake we've already seen in a walking boot this year. Yeah, the the Arizona running back is super valuable. I don't think – thought that was breaking news for a second. Oh, I was no, like, no, what no. Are, what are we, no, what are we I, talking I, about here? I'm with you. Chase Edmond, Edmonds needs to be on a bench. I don't think you can actually start him. He, he got – some some work, but just not startable stuff. In this offense, they like to throw the football to the the running back. They're good offense. I don't know if the gap between starting a Kareem Hunt and starting a Chase Edmonds is very big. Sure. I mean, yeah, you you can get production out of both of them. Edmonds has a nose for the end zone. I'm with you. All right, tight ends. Drop candidates from Twitter and Instagram. Hayden Hurst. No. Nope. No. Chris Herndon. Nope. No, I would not drop Herndon. He was targeted. Mm-hmm. Uh, I dropped all Jets. No, not really. Evan Ingram. No. Nope. He started the game exactly how his career was. <laughs> Overt, ugly drop. He'll be targeted, sure. and he, I don't think he's going to be consistent. It, he, he may not be. He also had a, a big reception callback on an OPI. you got to remember, it's about who you're dropping them for. Would you drop Evan Ingram for Noah Fant after last night's 5 for 81 and 1 on six targets? Yep. That changed real you're, quick. You're in. You're it in does. on the I, fantastic. I, I don't know if it's the regret. I, I drafted Evan Ingram in our league of record. I kind of went against my own rankings where I've been very high on Johnu and Noah Fant, and then I took Evan Ingram, and then this week happened. I So it, maybe it's a little bit of, of that, but I believe Noah Fant. I, I believe what I saw in camp, what I saw in week one. I think he has the talent, and they're going to involve him even after Cortland Sutton is back. So Fant, to me, is someone I would I would certainly pick up, but I don't think he's available in most of your leagues. Is he the number one ad, or are you in on Dallas Goddard, John New Smith, Mike? If, if he was there, if I lost Blake Jarwin, Noah Fant would be the number one guy, and I would be super aggressive to go and get him as well. Looking at him as a long-term tight end starter. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Goddard had the big week, 8 for 1 on 1 and 1. Mike, you mentioned it yesterday. The vibes are not great with Zach Ertz and They're the contract not. situation. 
his leverage is not like other tight ends. I mean, the, Dallas Goddard is a very good pass catching tight end. He was in on seventy nine percent of snaps. Is he a must add? If wow, seventy nine. Yeah. Okay, seeing the seventy nine percent. Yeah, he. That's very very intriguing. Of because uh, you know last year it was Goddard would come through with the touchdown. And that's kind of what it was. It was touchdown or bust, but he wasn't really a full-time player. But if he's playing on 80% of the snaps, then Dallas Goddard is a he's a weekly start. Yeah, this this could be the first time we've seen since Gronk and, Gronk and Hernandez where two tight ends from the same team right. are utilized in a way where you can actually start both each week. I, I think Goddard should be rostered. There was a report yesterday that Deshaun Jackson's snaps were being limited and that Doug Peterson said in future weeks they're going to go uh, northward. North. Did he use the word northward? No, I said that. Oh, um, where is north? He he is oh. actually a great, right. a great name to bring up, Andy, because we. I'm shocked that he wasn't in the should I drop Deshaun Jackson yeah. group. A lot of people disappointed because he wasn't just sitting on the bench. The matchup looked appropriate to start. The process was there, and I still believe right. And he was in the lineup, and disappointed people. So they want to drop him. I would not drop Deshaun Jackson. All right, and then uh, – so if I were putting them in order right now, I would go Noah Fant, yes. one. Uh, then it gets it gets more difficult. Hawkinson had a nice week one like he did last year, but they need pass catching. I mean, they What's, with, without Kenny Galladay out there, the, the they parallels, look like a mess. Yeah, that's, the parallels are, are wild here. Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson, first – round wide receivers same college team big week ones because the number one wide receiver for their teams were both out I, i'm just this is neither here nor there but it's just blowing my mind right now and then um so hawkinson goddard eric ebron i think he uh nah. I, he needs to prove it before you need yep. to put him back on a roster i'm out apparently kyle uh the borgogan dug up an old slack message that i had sent in early August, about Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas was four for 37 and one on eight targets. Eight targets. Yes, it's very interesting. And uh, back then I said there's no pass catchers outside of Terry McLaurin, which still seemed very true in week one. If you don't know who this is, that's Logan Thomas, the <laughs> from quarterback Washington. from the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> who is now playing tight end for Washington. Yes, yeah, he, he both was of a, those were true. <laughs> he was a tight end in Buffalo as well. But he has an opportunity and because he, he's an athlete. He also plays against who next week? Jason? Arizona. Arizona, which I don't think is going to be as bad as in years past. I will say J.J. Zacharyson thinks that Logan Thomas will be a top 10 tight end remainder of the season um, because the pass catching options are – they're not there outside of McLaurin. Eight targets in week one is is very impressive. Let's circle back to, to uh, Jonu Smith from the Tennessee Titans. He came down with a touchdown. He had seven targets. Now, uh, he's he's tough to decipher because the like we said at the beginning of the show, forty plus targets or attempts from yeah. Ryan Tannehill is not happening on a weekly basis. Jason, you were the big John U guy. Are you? Are it, where does he rank for the waiver wire pickups for you? Is he near the top? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's he's probably in my top four or so. I would go uh, Fant, Hawkinson, Goddard. Janu Smith. That would be my order for the the All top right. of the waivers. Uh, Chris Herndon would probably be higher than than Janu. Yeah, Janu was it was Janu Smith last night. I mean, that's he's a very dynamic athlete, and and it's nice to know you have a tight end you can start. I mean, there's a difference between hoping for one touchdown or I think he'll be involved. It's just, um, I think he'll get an, a, enough targets to be relevant, and he has the ability. To have to, a breakaway to touchdown. Bra right. If, if he gets four targets in a game, one of those targets can result in an 80-yard touchdown. There's a, a handful of those type of tight ends. What about Jimmy league. Grandpa? Oh, man. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> where did, Grandpa. Where did this come from? Whoa. Who, wait. Hold, hold on. Where's the it break? Was, it was right there. It was uh, the, the Borgogan. How has this not happened before? Now? I don't it's right know. there. I don't know. His name is Jimmy Graham. <laughs> Pa, come on! You're mad we, at yourself right yes. now. I am furious with myself. We have let the foot down. We could have done this two years ago. We eat all low-hanging fruit, and here this was. 
it's it's so ripe now though i mean <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's a little rotten it's a little rotten. but i'm in jimmy grandpa <laughs> i love that jimmy grandpa is at least three years younger than all of us <laughs> i mean if not more but he had Football a t- age. he had a touchdown he was 80 percent of snaps jimmy grandpa or johnny smith Man, I'm take I, that. and I hear Judge Giamatti <laughs> just laughing over there. He really likes it. I I think Jimmy Grandpa is someone you can look to, but I would still take Jonu Smith ahead. I think I'd grab the Grandpa. <laughs> He's going to have so many goal line targets. Like when they don't ha- when they get sneaky, when Matt Nagy well, gets sneaky and this, doesn't hand it off around the goal line. This is a perfect time to bring up this point because this is not. Like, this isn't breaking news. This I don't know what to make of this because we've seen this behavior from players before. Are you guys aware Allen Robinson, superstar wide receiver for the Chicago Bears, has stripped all Bears things from his social media? No. I was unaware. Well, and he already put the eyeballs up about a week or two ago after the announcement of Mitch Trubisky over Nick Foles. Right. So, he, he has – He's in a contract year, right? He is in a contract year. He has – I mean – this is – we are strolling down there to Would you street. put Anthony Miller back in the wide receiver pickups? No, I would not. <laughs> I wouldn't. Because if something happens there with I – don't, I don't think something's going to happen where Allen Robinson doesn't play. I'm just saying, play. is, is not, he disgruntled and – Yes, I'm sure he is. He wants to get paid. He wants to have security in a contract. Obviously, that's not coming together in the timeline he wants, but he's going to be out there. And if anything, he needs to prove – He's you know, so good. Yeah, I don't, he doesn't need to prove anything, Jason. Stop it. He's no, amazing. I, I get, no, Jason's making the contractual point that he needs to go out there and establish himself for a future contract, which is true. I mean, you can't go out there and be disgruntled for half the year, have half the staff, stat line, and then ask for big money. Yeah. Um, de- uh, defensive streaming options for this week. I One that's out there everywhere, Cleveland. You know, nobody had them because they played Baltimore, but they get to face Joe Burrow yep. on Thursday night football. Yep. They will hit him. Uh, they will uh, cause a turnover or two. They are not going to cost you much to pick up. Yeah, I'm, I'm in on that. The Los Angeles Rams against that mm. Philadelphia offensive line. Aaron Donald. I've, I've heard, I have my sources, that right, right. The, the Rams, are they're not even going to play a line. Just Donald? Just Aaron Donald. And then they're going to drop everybody else into coverage. <laughs> wow. I'll be- I would bet it could work. Sometimes. I, I think it, he could make enough you pressure ever- with that many DBs out there. Sometimes his, Quattro teams. his peripheral <laughs> defensive linemen, they just said Indian style during the play and just relax. Uh, I also think Arizona uh, against the Washington football team is – not a bad play. You got to remember, even though the defense was terrible last year, I think they it's didn't, a great play. They didn't have Patrick Peterson for half the year. Then half of the time they had him, he was not in game shape. They got better at the end of the year. They added Isaiah Simmons, added a bunch to the D line uh, against you know Dwayne Haskins. I I think Arizona is a fine play. Arizona is going to win that game by twenty five points. Ooh, I don't okay, agree with that. I'm just line, putting that on the record, but. Um, Mike has proved. <laughs> well, I, that was the computer. That had okay. nothing to do oh, with the me. computer verified. You ran it that's... against the Gray yeah. Sports Almanac and Our it came true. <laughs> How about Kansas City against the Los Angeles oh, Chargers, who yes. looked terrible? Yes. But, uh, yeah, if Kansas City's defense was not already rostered, please pick them up. Mm-hmm. That'll be – what is the, like, cap on points for Los Angeles with Tyra Taylor at quarterback right now? I would say – 21 uh, that, but that's like no cap now what number in fact is 21 uh, there, with well, the st- you you came in with a ch uh, there. oh yeah 20 20 50. oh i did not 21 catch that. i had no idea what you were talking about 55 <laughs> 55 all right let's talk streamers full stream ahead all right if you're new to the show each and every Tuesday on the waiver episode, we like to give you a streaming quarterback candidate. We give it to you early because waivers are going through, so you need to be able to pick them up and play them. So at the quarterback position, who do you got, Jason? I've got Jared Goff this week. He had a down, like a down week last week, but he didn't play poorly. It was just the touchdowns. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> announcing Jared Gierf. Uh Jared Gierf is... 
uh, I think, a, a, a very good quarterback for the system, and the matchup is good against Philly in the sense that I don't think it will be very easy for Malcolm Brown to run the show. They will try to impose their will and run the ball. If they succeed there, Jared Goff could very well end up how he was last week, a, a, an efficient game that doesn't have a lot of fantasy points. I don't think they'll be able to impose their will on the Philadelphia D-line, in which case they'll have to get Cooper Cup involved, Robert Woods involved, these tight ends. Uh, I think Goff has a, a very good day and is a good play this week off the waiver wire. Quick question. I don't know if this has ever been mentioned before. Has anyone ever seen Jared Goff and Adam Lefko in the exact same place? I I haven't, but I see them every time I look at either one. I think there's a there's a yeah. there's a situation going on here. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Mike, who's your streaming quarterback? I'm going with Ryan Tannehill against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know it didn't turn it for Philip Rivers, it did not come to full fruition, but Rivers was able to put, get some numbers going. He just didn't get the full uh, the touchdown experience, and I, Ryan Tannehill is going to be able to get it done against this team. All right, I will go with the 0-1, Jimmy Garoppolo, oh. taking on the New York Jets, who are currently starting not Jamal Adams. Yeah. And... Jimmy G, they're going to be able to impose their will offensively against the Jets. Now, do, do all the scores come on the ground? We'll see. But Jimmy Garoppolo should have a very comfortable week <laughs> against the Jets in week two. Coming off the loss to Kyle Shanahan, um, and Jimmy G's not rostered almost anywhere, so I, I'm going to go with Jimmy G this week. Other possible candidates, anybody else you want to throw out there? Yeah, there, I mean, it's... Mitch Trubisky against the Giants, getting ready to start the year strong. You, you can go with that. That one's fine. Kirk Cousins against the Colts. I mean, there's there's a there's a few decent options. I'm not going to play him this week, but I'm keeping my eyes on Gardner because I I, sure. I think he could be really good for fantasy this season. Okay, all right. Gardner. And if you want to get who do the Jaguars play next week? Tennessee. No, no I'm Just sorry. Was in, it in twenty two pass attempts last week for Gardner? Yeah, it was a low volume. Obviously, he was excellent, three passing touchdowns, but very low volume. But he, here's the deal. If you want to pick up Minshew, if you have a deeper bench and you're looking ahead, here's the schedule for Gardner Minshew. Dolphins, Bengals, Texans, Lions. That is juicy. I, yeah. love, or, getting, I love getting a week ahead. That is juicy for fantasy quarterbacks. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction today. We love pristine auction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions, your favorite fantasy football players. Uh, somebody wrote us yesterday, a listener. They got a signed Allen Robinson jersey for $55. Nice. Um, all the Bears logos it, were taken yeah, off of the jersey. I was say. No, not really. <laughs> uh, but they said they couldn't believe they got it so cheap. You can check them out, pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit. All right, that is it for today's episode of the show. You can join us tomorrow for another one. And then the next day for another yeah. one. Just keep joining us. Yeah. <laughs> Stay right. safe, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.